back in Death Valley with a tied score at 14. Herb Tyler, the quarterback for LSU, is on the field after he really took a shot underneath his chin. He is back in the game after having his eyes checked for dilation. They have the pen light out. I'll tell you right now, this timeout came at a very opportune moment for LSU because he is not back in the game with all of his faculties. Sparacino, the backup quarterback, is ready to go and warmed up if Tyler cannot handle decision-making his first and second play. Okay, we'll watch it, Adrian, as we begin the fourth quarter. Play action, steps up and drills this pass and has it complete to Foster and out of bounds just shy of the 45. That's enough for the first down. Not only does he have all his faculties, but he's added a few. That's a strong arm throw right there to Larry Foster coming out of the pocket. But that's what Morris Watts, the coordinator, wants to do with Herb Tyler. Roll him out and get him on the corner. He's about five foot nine. Find him a passing lane. And a great catch by Larry Foster. And, Ron, you also think if you're an All-American back, it's Kevin Falk time, too, to run this football. But he gets the handoff, squeezes one up the middle, goes inside the 40. He's down to the floor to 39, and Tony George is there to make the tackle on him. That's a gain of about six, and George is shaken up after making the tackle, holding his right wrist. Ron, you're seeing an All-American effort tonight by Alan Fanica, the right guard. He, they have just chose to run over number 66. Here's the block that he has on Reggie McGrew. Just does a nice job tying him up so that Kevin Falk can get through. George, who's down, and as we said, holding his right ankle, has six tackles tonight as you look at Allen. And uh, Fanica... An outstanding lineman, and boy, George is really in pain. As you can see, he's wincing as they as they try to touch that wrist. And now down on the sideline, Danny Boyd, who's a sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida, is warming up kicking, and it would appear that Wade Ritchie, who missed so badly on that field goal attempt a moment ago, might not be scratched. And now a timeout has been called, and it looks as though like they have brought an air cast from the sideline for Tony George. This does not look good for the Florida Gators. So there's a timeout. We'll be right back. 14:39 left in our ball game. I'll tell you, he did absorb. He got run over. Yeah, he uh, he absorbed. The ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida versus LSU, is brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Sonic, America's Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Tony George on the sideline, and you can tell he's not only in pain, but he's disgusted because a competitor like that, Mike, does not want to miss one down of a game like this. He, he knows that his club needs him badly. Boy, that drop play went nowhere. Rutledge was there to just eat up the running back fought. Well, here's a look at how it happened. He really absorbed the blow delivered by Fox. See, he grabs for that hand immediately. Third down for the LSU Tigers. They need to move the ball just shy of the 35 of Florida. Tyler sets in the pocket. He's going to go deep. And he's got a man. Foster, and the ball is just overthrown. Javon Curse again was applying pressure. He may be the next great player, Javon Curse, at the University of Florida. He has everything you need. He's a linebacker at 6'5", 243, and just runs with uh, great speed. Puts the pressure being blocked. It's away. It's his hands in the face of Herb Tyler. Looks like Whitten is going to be punting rather than Chad Kessler because of him being so close. The pooch punter. And he aims for the sideline. Very high kick. The wind holding this one a little bit, and couldn't get it to stay back in the field of play. Florida will take it over at the 20. 
Well, coming up on Friday night, it's that time again. The 1997-98 college basketball season tips off with the excitement of Midnight Madness. Dick Vitale will be on hand after the Jim Herrick era opens with a night practice at Rhode Island. We'll also be at Duke, South Carolina, and in Tennessee with the Volunteers and Lady Bald celebrate Midnight Madness this Friday on ESPN. Ron, I'm happy to see Jim Herrick back. He'll do a great job there at Rhode Island. Here comes a corner blitz. Johnson sets in the pocket, barely gets it away, and he wisely threw it out of bounds. Rayon Hill, number 21, was coming with the pressure. Well, you know the story last year, the route of Florida on LSU, and to bring the ball club back tonight, Jerry DiNardo with a great coaching job, but the assistant coaches tonight, what a game plan by Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator. There's Carl right here. And Morris Watts sitting right next to him. There's Carl Reese pounding that glass, hoping for a stop. But both those coaches and their staff to be congratulated on a great plan tonight. Well, the bandit package in the ball game. There's the pressure. And the pass is picked off. That's Donaldson. And he will score. This interception run is pressure, but watch Doug Johnson throw off his back foot. And when you throw off your back foot, you get no velocity on the football. And Cedric Donaldson, who you talked to the other day, said he was going to talk some trash. He's going to talk to now. Well, Doug knows that he made a very bad error. And this goes back to what I talked about. The early mistakes this year have not blown up in their face. Right now, they have. Let's take a time out. LSU back on top. Well, <laughs> Saturday night in Baton Rouge, and when the Tigers a play in the way they play tonight. I mean, these folks are just coming unglued. Cedric Donaldson, two interceptions tonight, one return, 68 yards, and now this one officially 31 yards for a touchdown. Kickoff coming into the wind, and this is Bo Carroll. Comes back into the boundary, and loses the ball. LSU has recovered at the 30. He just lost that thing, Mike. Right? He just dropped it around. But Troy Twilley was Johnny on the spot in recovery. But now LSU's got to turn this into at least three points. They want seven, but they need at least three on this drive. Going to go on top, but I think he's throwing this one out of bounds. Yep. Booty was the intended receiver, but he was throwing off the back foot where he was out there with him, and it caused that thing to just uh, go way, way, way too far out of bounds. Fred Wary did a nice job, Ron, because he got against the receiver, Abram Booty, and just worked him out of bounds so that it, it was a non catchable football. Remember the field goal woes that uh, LSU's had tonight. Well, that's you. You see the movement of the sideline. Richie missed. Boyd that was warming up, and now that's the final timeout by the LSU Tigers as they want to talk it over on second down. So we'll take a break. LSU by a touchdown. We'll be right back. Check his green on the sideline, knowing that at 12 minutes and 54 seconds that normally 
that is uh, just a huge amount of time for his offense to score. But the situation tonight, a very pesky and unpredictable LSU defense has thwarted that. They only have 14 points tonight. And my guy would suggest one other thing to look at for this point of the ballgame. Penalties, four against Florida, and four turnovers for LSU, only one penalty and one turnover. And Ron, I'd look for some kind of rollout here with her Tyler, getting him out of the pocket some way. Set deep, throws the ball, has it complete, that's booty. Inside the 20, down to the 15, Fred Wurry tackled him. Well, they didn't need to take him out of the pocket. Herb Tyler has played a great football game tonight. Talked about the problems he had in the Auburn game. He has played lights out tonight for LSU. He reads the short post pattern. Abram Booty on the route. Just right on the break against Fred Weary. Booty now three catches, 86 yards, and that's all this had. Draw play, fought. Bounces it off. One tackler in the middle, and he was one away from getting it big, and Kelsey makes the stop. Adrian? I'll tell you right now, guys, remember, Tony George is no longer in this game. The update on his injury, probable broken right thumb. He has gone through the locker room in one of those air casts for an x-ray. It actually made him sick to his stomach, guys. You can see the pain on camera there. Now, LSU knows this as well. What they're trying to do is to get Abram Booty lined down on his replacement and go right after their weakness in defensive backfield. That's John Exnitis, number 26. He's a senior. He's got a lot of experience. Option play. Run it back into the boundary. Here's Tyler. He will score. Tigers trying to make it a 14-point lead. Extra point is up, and it is good. Danny Boyd with the successful try, and with 11.40 left in our ball game, all of a sudden we'll start keeping a close eye on that clock as number one's number one position is in jeopardy. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Here's a look at Tyler on the keeper. Did not make the pitch, Mike, and he's going to take it into the end zone. He had to have a big night, and Herb Tyler has had an excellent night here. 157 yards. He ran the ball in the option. He's scrambling for 46 yards and two touchdowns. Remember, no big turnovers out of Herb Tyler. This kick going to be taken by Bo Carroll. Would like to make amends for that fumble he had a moment ago. And he is going to be tackled at the 22. Gatlin, one of the first men down to make the hit. The LSU has been opportunistic all evening. They blocked the steal goal. Come back, Doug Johnson. Here's the interception. First interception. And they miss the field goal. Come back with the interception by Donaldson for the touchdown. And then on the kickoff, Boy Twilly with the fumble recovery. So they've taken advantage of Florida mistakes. Mike, back to live play. If LSU oh, called no a timeout, time they don't have a timeout. The defense coming over toward the bench. They took, the, you know, they took the two quick ones. And Steve Spur is yelling at the official in front of him. That's exactly what he said, exactly what you're saying. You see LSU faking the blitz. No flag, pass thrown complete at the 26. And that is Kareem, who is close to the 30-yard line, and it's Donaldson who makes the stop. And from the looks of Kareem, that uh, hamstring tightened up on him a little bit as he got up. In fact, he's going to go out of the ball game. If you're going to play forward and you want a map of how to play him, you study this game tape because Carl Reese 
the defensive staff have not allowed the big play except for a 53 yard pass to Fred Taylor. Cooper Carlisle comes out. Now Mo Collins had gone out just a second ago. So the two starting tackles for Florida have gone to the bench. Browning is in. Well, they're taping together the offensive line. And Scott Bryan has come in the game. Swing pass, Fred Taylor. Has the first down, and the stop is made at the 38. Again, it's Donaldson. No, I beg your pardon. It's going to be second down. They had picked it up just prior. A little more shotgun. Steve Spurrier said it the last two games of the last year. They went to the shotgun a little bit more. Now you expect Doug Johnson to be in the shotgun a little bit more as he goes to the 10-25 mark. That was Mo Collins that they were massaging his legs, obviously cramped. You see the pressure, Johnson pass complete to Kareem. Chuck Wiley with the pressure. By taking him... You say he caught it out of bounds, I think, Mike. Is that what you think? Okay. Ron, now by taking him to the shotgun now, he can see a little bit better the blitz of what's coming after him. So he's got a chance to deliver the pass a better sight on the blitz. So it's third down. Third down, and the line to make for Florida is the 43 and a half. LSU by 14 points. About to go into 10 minutes to play in the game. Drills it, has it complete for the first down, Kareem. And you can see the reaction by Joe Wesley, the linebacker, Good for 13 yards. And Doug Johnson looks like he's a little bit more comfortable now in the shotgun. Where he's got a little bit more time to throw. He said Scott Bryant at one tackle. Pat Browning, number 73, the other tackle. A couple of sophomores have had to come in replacing Cooper Carlisle and Mo Collins. Zach Pillar went out in the very first quarter with an injury. Johnson sets up the screen. Fred Taylor right over the middle. Gets by one, gets by two, and finally going to be tackled at the 32-yard line. Cummings on the stop. It's good for 16. Johnson's Run by going to the shotgun now. A couple things have happened here. Now all of a sudden you see LSU's in a three-man front. Now they are not worried about a running game now. Fred Taylor sneaks He'll catch this pass, just uses great speed to get away from the linebackers. But you can forget the run now. The only run they've got is a, a draw play to Fred Taylor. That's why LSU is on a three-man rush. Pressure on Johnson, barely got it away. And it's going to be overthrown. Richardson is the man that he wanted. And there's Troy Twilley again, who was applying the pressure. And Pat Doug Browning. is slow getting up. Look at this. Well, you talked about Steve Spurrier. He said he fought, took far too many hits in the Arkansas game. Here's what he's been, what's happened to him tonight. What? Sacked five times. Troy Twilley. And those hits like body blows of boxing match are just keep taking their toll on you. Doug Johnson has proven he is a very tough guy there. 29 to 49 and three pickoff gets his pass away that's complete good for the first down and the official says keep the clock running and in fact when they snap the ball again it's going to be under nine minutes to play in the game in lsu just keeping everything in front of them wholesale substitutions trying to keep fresh people chasing doug johnson probably go under center here around in a third and one situation so that they have the run play. Third and short. Here comes the blitz. Taylor right up the middle. Bounces and spins off the tackler inside the 20. Mixon finishing, but it is enough for the first down. And let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian? Ron, I want to remind you and coach and tell the rest of our fans something that Steve Furrier said yesterday. Gosh, I just can't wait to come in here and use all of our hand signals as we go into the student section where it's so loud. Well, now he's got his golden opportunity, and Johnson has had some trouble reading those signals this drive. On first down, far sideline, the pass goes and knocks away. Cedric Donaldson, who already has two interceptions working against green what adrian's talking about there and florida prepared for this game 
to come into this loud stadium and they do it for all the away games where they expect a lot of noise. They do not blare the music like a lot of coaches do and a lot of staffs do, but what they do is they whisper out on the practice field so that the receivers cannot hear what the quarterback's saying so that they go to the signal. Tenth play of the drive. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. Johnson cannot get it off. Sacked way back at the 36-yard line. Joe Wesley and Troy Twillard. Ron, that's coming back, though. They're offside. There's no way that they LSU was not offside on that play. There's the call, and it's going to cost the Tigers second penalty. I believe it's Joe Wesley. He's so far over and he knocked the guard down before the Ryan Kalick before the ball was snapped. So with the five-yard penalty, they'll step it off, and it's going to be a second down and five. The ability now not to huddle. Getting the signals from the sideline, cost them some time, but if they were huddling, it'd be about the same amount of time to get the line of scrimmage. Fred Taylor dropped the football, and again, Rayon Hill came up to make a hit. Cummins, Hill, Twilly, Donaldson, boy, these guys have, have been everywhere tonight for the LSU Tigers. And LSU, in preparing for Florida this week, cut their practices back a half hour every day. They felt like they were tired of Vanderbilt, and they wanted to get their legs up under them again. You know what Donaldson said yesterday, though? He said, if the truth be known, a lot of time taken away with special teams. He said, we still work pretty hard. <laughs> It's all in the mind. Yeah. <laughs> Third down. They need to take it to the nine and a half yard line. Got it complete to his tight end. And Kenny, let's see if he got the first down. He is very, very close. Flag down in the secondary. Defensive holding. comes down. Chris Beard with the cover. Now he'll be asking who. He has the receiver down to you. Downfield by the offense. The foul is five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. So it cost them five. You can see Nasty and Travis and the grip. What in the world happened? How they wound up with that? Well, what happened, Ron, I think is one of the receivers was covered. Yeah. And they had three receivers to one side. One of them was on the line of scrimmage, covered by another receiver on the line of scrimmage. So once he went downfield, he's an ineligible receiver downfield. There's a movement by Scott Bryan. And that five yards will go right back. Scott being called on 
to play tonight because of Mo Collins being out of the game. And the youngster made an error that... Uh, you know what, Ron? I'm going to say something here, and I may sound really stupid, but this, this is not a bad penalty. It gives them a little bit more room to work with in their passing game. You know, when you get around the eight-yard line, you get constricted to really running your routes. All of a sudden, now you're back where you got a little bit more room. We also need to point out that Scott didn't do it on purpose. But it, but they, as you're saying, could benefit from it. Could benefit. From the shotgun, pick up pass. That's Green. Turns it up at the 10. Inside the 5, and he's down to the three-yard line. Joe Wesley defensively. John Fresh Green it shows you the burst that once he caught that football, the burst he was able to get up the field shows his quickness. 14 yards on this reception. Once he gets that football in his hands, he's up that football field, gets some good blocks by Kareem. Seventh catch for 91 yards for him. Second and go. Johnson brings it too high for Green. It'll be third down. Had too much on that one too, Ron. And that was Steve Spurrier said to us the other day. Sometimes in practice, he has such a strong arm, they ask him to take a little bit off. He just thrilled this one. Well, McCollum should come in. He's going back to the sideline. Going up under center, so you've got the possibility of a run here. Quick pick. Fred Taylor turns the corner at the one, comes down Florida. Frazier with a good block. A lot of time left, 644. LSU's used their timeouts. Florida still has two. So the extra point attempt coming right here. Florida tries to cut this to a seven-point ball game. Good pass. Cooper's got it right down the middle of the six minutes and 44 seconds. We'll hold it right here. And our new score, LSU 28. It's top rank Florida 21. Ron, that was an impressive drive by the Florida. All out of the shotgun until they go to a running play. But Doug Johnson shows you his strong arm. There, the power arm. But it's just a little bit too hard there for Jack Mess Green. Here's the touchdown. The pitch back. And Frazier with the kick out. It's a good block there. And the power of Fred Taylor getting in the end zone. You can see Fred Taylor has, uh, has injured a finger. He's being attended to on the sideline. And, it's more like a cut. And don't forget, you know, Florida is picking up a lot of injuries tonight. They've got Auburn next week. Uh, he's, he's beaten uh, LSU, so, uh, and really matches up better against Florida than LSU matches up against Florida. By the way, you saw Taylor there a moment ago. 22 carries, 90 yards for him. He's trying to keep that 100-yard game going. He's had one every game this year. But probably a fingernail that got ripped off there. If I had to guess from where they're flying that bandit. Team doctor's been busy tonight. Boy, he really has. Falk and Mealy back at a dual safety. It's Mealy to the right side, Falk to the left. And here comes Stevenson's kickoff. And it's returnable from the goal line. Falk. What a block, and he turns on the burst of speed out to the 30-yard line, and man, there was a hit. Let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian. Ron, i got to hand it to you. Your eyesight's pretty good. That young man is going to need a manicure. Now, the Florida defense is in the game being told directly, get your hat and your hands on the ball. That is, say, tackle the ball. It sounds good, but the problem with that is as good as Falk is in the backfield and Tyler can run, too, you try to tackle the ball. These guys are going to pick up an additional two or three yards every time out. Those are first downs as they move down the field. They're going to crowd the football here, Adrian. They're going to put eight up here to stop the run. They'll lock these corners on the wide receiver. Straight ahead with the fullback, and it's Banks. He scored one tonight, and he breaks it out for six yards, and actually, Jerry DiNardo would take that every time. 
They've had success with the fullback trap up inside, following Alan Fanica, number 66, up inside on the linebacker. Now you're Morris Watts calling plays. You, you, you want to keep Florida off balance, but you want to run that football and move this clock. Alan Fanica, Jr., out of Rosenberg, Texas, 6'5", 3'10". They run behind him again at a spot. And you can see he's grabbed by McGrew, a chest-high tackle. And now, third down LSU. And they're going to need about three yards for the first down. The play they've had the most success with in this kind of situation is the option play. It's not a pitch. It's going to be Herb Tyler carry it all the way if they decide to go to that. Mike Falk is hurt. He has come to the bench favoring his left shoulder. We'll check on him following this third down play. Option play. Open side. Gets back to Neely. Gets by one tackler. And let's see. Not quite enough. He's going to be about a yard, a yard short. You've got to punt the football. The third yard short, you've got to punt the football. Puts in a tough situation here. But again, Florida was looking for the option, too. Well, I have a feeling here that LSU's going to let this thing run as far down as it will go. Even take the five-yard penalty, boot it into the wind, and decide that they got to play some defense if they're going to win it. Still got plenty of time. The play clock is at eight. Now it's seven. And Green is the deep man. Again, another line drive kick by Thompson. But good coverage, and it's not going to be returnable as the ball is going to roll out of bounds at the 21. Coming up on Thursday at ESPN National Hockey Night, the Pittsburgh Penguins take on the New York Rangers. Yager against Gretzky. 8 o'clock Tuesday. They'll face it off live at Madison Square Garden National Hockey Night right here on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from Baton Rouge. Fought. They looked at his left shoulder, and now they're not attending to it. Ron, here's where the substitute package a defensive lineman on the field, that bandit package, could pay off for LSU. They got fresh defensive people in to chase out Johnson. Three wide receivers out to the right. Johnson gets it away, and it is caught by Richardson at the 26, and it was Theo Williams, 93, with a good rush. And there's a flag down on the far sideline. Florida had all those wide receivers. I don't think everybody was on the line where they might, but was everybody set. They're calling illegal procedure on Florida, so back them up five. I didn't see anybody moving. Uh, that's the call. Well, Johnson has taken a lot of hits in this ball game again tonight. Theo Williams, number 93, one of those young defensive linemen on the bandit squad. He's got a Marrero. First down and 15. Clock is running. 407. Now 406. Can LSU pull the upset over number one? Here comes the screen. Taylor breaks one tackle, but will not get away from Charles Smith. And Smith saved a lot more yardage. Check in with Adrian Carson. They didn't run the situation on Kevin Falk. That shot he took to his left shoulder, very similar to the shot he took earlier in the game and had a deep bruise from uh, the first quarter on to the shoulder joint up high, as I say, in his left shoulder. Now, Florida knows exactly where they hit him, but there's no way he's going to stay out of this game. He'll come back when they get the ball back, but watch Florida continue to hit him high. Johnson retreats, pressure up the middle, and the ball is incomplete. And the reason for it is Johnny Mitchell, a redshirt freshman, also out of Marrero, and he was all over Doug Johnson. Doug had to get rid of the football. And threw off the back foot, but here is where Carl Reese's plan's paying off. You watch the throw off of the back foot. He's not able to get anything on that pass. Johnny Mitchell, good pressure, fresh defensive lineman in your last four minutes to chase the Florida quarterback. So it's third down. They need to take it to the 31-yard line to keep it going. And Johnson has gone to the bench 
Palmer, the freshman out of Ontario, is in at quarterback. Flag is down, throws the pass complete right over the middle to Kareem, and now let's check the marker. Is it going to be waved off, or is it against the LSU Tigers? Illegal procedure, Florida. Wow. I think you could tell by that if Steve didn't agree with no, the call. No, he hasn't agreed with the call tonight by that uh, side judge. Foul is a dead ball. Ball starts by the offense. The foul is five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Doug Johnson coming back in the ball game now. Jesse Palmer had the one play in there and completed the pass. Eight penalties, 48 yards against the Gators. Palmer, it goes without saying, many people think is really going to be an outstanding quarterback as the Florida Gators have a player shaken up, but it would appear that Kareem... And there's another flag down on the sideline. Now, this may be a, a call on the bench now, unless this is the previous call. Let's see if there's another call on the bench here. Well, here comes the referee. Holds a hand up. And it is a sportsmanlike call against Florida. Foul is a dead ball, unsportsmanlike by the offense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Still third down. That is huge, Mike. Yeah, big, a big call against the bench. And that's a pretty good hole now to dig out of with 3.18 to go. So if you just joined us, here's the situation. LSU 28, number one Florida 21. Clock is running with 3.10 to play, and it's third down and 22. They need to take it all the way to the 31 if they want to hold on to the football. Johnson goes wrong, and it is intercepted by LSU. Rayon Hill. Well, um, that's really, it's not that bad. You'd like to have a completion, but it's just like a punt. If you wouldn't have made it on that third down, you still would have had to punt. you got two timeouts to still get the football back if you can hold LSU here. Here's the pitch, the running play by Tyler. He's tripped up. You can see 52 Dwayne Thomas take his feet out from under him. Florida has two timeouts left. LSU none, and of course the Tigers don't want to stop the clock. They want to let it run down as far as possible. And a timeout has been taken by Florida. So this means that the Gators now have one in the ball game. There are two minutes and 34 seconds left to play in a ball game. So let's take a timeout. The Tigers, just 234 away from a huge upset. I person. Well, I know that the uh, the Auburn game was called the earthquake game, but on that interception just now, that had to be close. As the ball is tumbled by Tyler and he holds on to it and avoids disaster oh, as he goes straight forward. Wow. And Florida's going to use their last time out here. So Florida takes their final timeout to stop the clock at 2.26 left in the ball game. And it will be third down LSU, and they need to take the ball to the Gator, what is that, 43 and a half yard line. Team set match if they get it to the 43. Next Saturday on ESPN2, the Indiana Hoosiers head to the Horseshoe to take on 7th ranked Ohio State at 12.30 Eastern. Then at 6 o'clock, number 5, North Carolina heads down to Backer Road to battle North Carolina State.
that. Then it's the Georgia Bulldogs taking on Vanderbilt in an SEC East Division matchup all next Saturday on ESPN2. On the confidence of Steve Spurrier, he, you know, he called them all out, and he told them he was coming. And uh, tonight, oh, uh, Carl Reese and Jerry DiNardo may get the best of this uh, this affair. They, they go over back over the clinic statement uh, after they held him to 320 yards, and last year put 600 yards on him and 50 some points. But tonight uh, is a different night. Third down, LSU comes to the line of scrimmage. He said they need to take it just inside the 44. Tyler throws one, has his man, and it's caught at the 35. It's Moody. He almost dropped that ball because he was thinking off the run. Ron, there's a lot of players in the game tonight. A lot of, a lot of great coaching tonight. But Herb Tyler has played, has stepped up, and done everything that people here in Baton Rouge expected out of him. Well, the streak's in jeopardy. 25-game SEC win streak on the line. 19-game SEC road win streak on the line. Clock is running in two minutes and five seconds. Folks, the largest party in South Louisiana that has happened in a long time will kick off as this continues. The handoff right up the middle. There is nothing. In fact, there is a loss of one as Elijah Williams comes up to make the tackle. And now Florida cannot stop the clock. It is down to 143 and 142. And for this man, certainly, it will be far and away the biggest win that this school under his regime will have come up with. The night, the attendance, 80,677. That's the second largest in LSU history. And they're just waiting, anticipating. They have a minute and 20 seconds, and then the jubilation can take over. Straight ahead with the handoff, or no handoff, and it's tighter on the sneak. It now is third down, and they should only have to run one more play, Mike. Ron, people at Penn State are already probably looking forward to hurdling the Florida Gators in the post. Willie Rogers is down, and the clock is stopped at 61 seconds. Well, the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. Ohio State, of course, was beaten today. And what Mike's referring to is that was a win by Penn State. Should Florida drop this one tonight, you would think the Penn State, Nebraska, and Florida State, North Carolina, all of those clubs would move up. Yeah, you put a W beside Nebraska and Florida State tonight, too. Nebraska has already won, we've just been told. If you look at the green, trying to digest this one, it is a, is a very tough one. Chester Blacks here on the sideline as well. And Ron can't get away without saying, oh, what Steve Spurrier has done at Florida in this winning streak. Uh, it's been remarkable what they've accomplished in a very, very difficult league. 39, now 38. Tyler straight ahead on the carry. 33 seconds. Tonight's Visa players of the game from Florida. Fred Taylor, 169 yards from LSU. Cedric Donaldson, two interceptions. As part of their continuing effort to the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these two athletes. Clock is down to 14, down to 13. Let them count it off for you. The LSU Tigers, a 15-point underdog, has knocked off the number one ranked Gators from the University of Florida by a score of 28 to 21. Adrian Carston, let's go down to the sideline. Coach, congratulations. Take all the SEC winning streaks, potential winning streaks, and throw them away. You just knocked off the number one team in the nation. Well, I'm just really 
for a team that they played really hard and they really deserve to have something like this happen to them. Saturday Night Live in Death Valley. What does that mean? Greatest fans in America. Herb Tyler had to have a great night. He had to be able to run and throw the ball. He did both superbly. Yeah, he really did. He fought really hard. He kept his poise and uh, he just played a great game. Just a what great they, team win. What they did with that curl route in the first half was really the only play burning you. Find a way to make an adjustment and got the job done. I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach Donato, on a huge, huge victory and upset. Ron? Adrian Karsten, thank you so much. All I can say is for all parents who are watching tonight that have kids here, I hope there's no curfew. Final score, LSU 28, the Florida Gators 21. Stay tuned. The Residence Inn College School Board is coming up next. And don't forget, next Saturday, we'll join you from Birmingham as Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Volunteers take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. For Mike Gottfried, Adrian Carson, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.